Hello crochet friends, welcome to Crazy Cool Crochet. In this project we are going to work this beautiful long cape and this is actually my version of the Serena Joy cape or coat that uh, was worn on The Handmaid's Tale. I'm going to stick with the single crochet for the entire garment. And this is because it's the shape, it's the silhouette that really, really makes this garment special. For this project, I am using Loops and Threads Soft and Shiny, and this one is a number four. The color is Rich Teal. So this particular yarn will give you a really beautiful drape. And the drape is really important for this garment. So be careful if you decide to use a different yarn, make sure that it's, it drapes nicely because that's going to be really important. And this particular yarn does have a little bit of a sheen which will make it that much more special. So in addition, we are also using scissors, a yarn needle, and a size H hook or a five millimeter. Please be sure to watch the video all the way through before you start it. And more detail regarding sizing um, and where you can find the printable pattern in my Etsy shop. Uh, the written pattern will make its way to the blog crazycoolcrochet.com and all those links will be in the description area below. So depending on your device, you will either click where it says show more or you will look for the title of the channel, Crazy Cool Crochet. There will be a little arrow or a little V. Click on that and it opens up the description area below with a lot more information. We are going to start with a chain of 121. This is for size small. And we're going to work in the back loops of the chain or what is sometimes known as the third loop. So rather than going in through the front of the chain, we're just going to turn the chain over just a little bit and you will find that third loop in the back. The first one is usually the trickiest one. So let me go ahead and start that. So you're going to skip the first chain, start into the second chain from the hook. Go in the back, single crochet, single crochet in the next, so you'll be doing a single crochet in each chain. Can you see those loops? They pretty much pop out at you once you turn this over just a little bit. Now the reason we're doing this, even though it's so much faster and easier just to go in through the center of the chain, we're doing this because it will form a self-border, more or less. I'm going to do a few more so you can see what I'm talking about. And the reason we're even doing this in the first place is because I don't want to add a border on the bottom. Let me turn this over a little bit. So you can see, hopefully, that it's forming a nice flat bottom. So rather than just be plain and flat on the front there, you're going to get a nice bottom. It's almost a 3D effect. So just keep going all the way across for 120 single crochets. What will be really helpful when working in those back loops is if you did the chain slightly loosely. So work with a little loose tension than you normally might. And that will give you the bigger chains and easier to find the loops in the back. At the end of that first row, we will chain one and turn. Now we're just going to do a single crochet into each space. 
starting with the first. And just a regular single crochet. We are not working in the back loops anymore. So just go in between the spaces below. In between the single crochets. So you will once again have 120 single crochets at the end of the row. Then you'll chain one, turn, and repeat. So another row of 120 single crochets. Okay, I want to show you where we are with the back panel at 120 single crochets. So this is worked up for 24 inches up and down. And that 24 inches was determined from the bottom, where I wanted the bottom to hit. For myself, um, a few inches below the knee. And then this takes you up to the top of where the armhole opening will be. You want the top of it to be around four inches above your elbow. So if you hold this up to yourself with your arms down, your arms against your body, and you're going to want that opening to be the top of it around four inches above your elbow. It's a cape, so it's not fitted. You've got a little wiggle room here. Now we're going to start shaping the shoulder area. Actually, just before you get up to the shoulder area, we're going to start decreasing. So after you've done your 24 inches, or however long you want the panel, we are on row 100. So that 24 inches for me got me 99 rows. Okay, so now we're going to do a single crochet decrease, one on each end. So we start that first single crochet in the first space, two loops on the hook, then start another single crochet in the next space for three loops on the hook. And now pull through all three, and you've just done a single crochet decrease. Now single crochet all the way across until you get to the end. And then in the last two spaces, we will do another single crochet decrease. Okay, now we are at the end of that row. We've got the last two spaces, and we're going to start the single crochet, two loops on the hook. Start the last single crochet in the last space, pour three loops on the hook, pull through all three, and there's your single crochet decrease, chain one, and turn. Now we're going to continue in the pattern with the single crochets in each space. So you're going to start with that first space and continue across. And this time you will have 118 because we've decreased one on each side. And you will repeat this for two more rows. So you'll have three rows of 118. Then on the next row, on the fourth row, we'll decrease one on each side again. So do this row chain one turn, do another row, chain one turn, do a third row of 118. Then you'll do a decrease on each side on the next row. Okay, here is where we are now. And it will probably help if you use stitch markers where you are doing your decreases. So this was the first decrease on row 100 where we're starting the decreases. And then we did three rows at 118, 118 single crochets, one, two, three. And then we did another decrease, which took us to 116. And then we did one more row at 116, and now we're going to decrease again. So we did the first decrease, then three rows in between, and then another decrease, and then one row at 116 and then we start decreasing again. So on this decrease we're at 114. We're going to do one more row at 114. Then the next row will be another decrease. That'll take us to 112. Then the next row will be another one at 112. And then the next one will be a decrease. So we'll continue like that. Every other row is a decrease until we get to row 113 which will take us to 108, then 113, we're at 108 again. 
when the pattern is the written pattern is up on the blog crazycoolcrochet.com you'll be able to follow along with the row counts okay now on row 114 so in the first two spaces we do a single crochet decrease okay so over the first two spaces like we've been doing we do a decrease and then we're going to do five single crochets one two three four five and then another decrease over the next two spaces and then one two three four five another decrease over the next two spaces one two three four five another decrease over the next two spaces one two three four five another decrease one two three four five six so right about in the center we're going to do six single crochets and then the decrease over the next two then one two three four five and we're going to continue until we get to the end so we're doing the five single crochets decrease five single crochets decrease and then when we get to the end we'll do our five single crochets and then decrease over the last two all told this will get us to a total of 92 single crochets okay the next row would be row 115 and for row 115 we are going to decrease every other space so we'll do our initial decrease over the first two spaces as usual and then one single crochet and then decrease over the next two spaces one single crochet decrease one single crochet decrease one single crochet all the way to the end of the row you will end up with 61 single crochets then you'll chain one and turn and now we're just going to stay on that count of 61 so you will enter one single crochet in each space no more decreases So at the end of each row, chain one turn and continue with one single crochet in each space. Okay, now on rows 115 through 136, we stay with the count of 61 single crochets. So you're only entering one single crochet in each space. 61. Then on rows 37 through 42, we decrease again one on each side on each edge as you can see here we're forming the shoulder shaping so we need to decrease one on each edge and rows 137 through 142 that will take us to a total of 49 single crochets and row 142 and that's where we end so the entire panel for the size small is 142 total rows from bottom to top ending with 49 single crochets then you can tie it off now this is basically what the panel looks like when it's complete it's not all going to show in the shot this is so you can see the shaping at the top okay now the front panels remember we're making two we are going to work similarly to the back panel except of course we're going to start with a chain of 55 and then we will be working rows of 54 single crochet so as with the back panel we're going to work 99 rows at 54 single crochet then we'll start our decrease on only one side okay so this let's say this is the center so the center will be straight just straight up and down and we'll be doing our decreases on only one side so on row 100 we're going to decrease on the one side let me turn this over okay so this is where we're working the decreases okay so row 100 we decreased on the edge 
and then continue with the single crochets, chain one turn and come back for 53 single crochets. So row 100 we decreased, row 101 to 103 we continued with the 53 single crochets and row 104 we're going to decrease again on the one side and continue with the single crochets across for 52 single crochets. Then chain one turn, row 105 will take us to 52 single crochet. Chain one turn, row 106, we do another decrease, which will take us to 51 single crochet. Chain one turn, row 107, we stay with the 51 single crochets. Row 108, we decrease again which takes us to 50 single crochet. Row 109, another row of that 50 single crochet. And row 110, we decrease again, and that brings us to 49 single crochet. Chain one turn, row 111, another row at the 49. Chain one turn, row 112, we'll decrease again, and that takes us to 48 single crochet. Chain one turn, row 113, we are still at the 48 single crochet. So you can see how we followed the decrease rows, the same as for the back panel, except that we're only decreasing on the one side. Now of course when we go to do the second panel, we're not done with the first one, but when we do the second panel, it's the exact same thing except we are reversing where we are doing the decreases. So it will be the other side. Now in row 114, that's where we do our major decreases. We are going to decrease at the beginning of the row. One decrease. And then we're going to do five single crochet, decrease over the next two. Five single crochet, decrease over the next two. Five single crochet, decrease over the next two. We will do a total of six decreases across the row. Not counting that first one. When we get to the end of the row, we end with four single crochets at the end. Then chain one and turn. We end up with a total of 41 single crochets. So just remember, there's no decreases at the end of the row. This is the straight edge. For the front panel, from rows 115 through 136, we stayed at the 41 single crochet count. Then, with rows 137 through 142, we did decreases on each side. So previously we were only decreasing on the one side, but now at the very top, in order to shape the shoulder and the neck, we are decreasing on both ends again. So from rows 137 through 142, decrease one single crochet on each side, and we will end with 27 single crochets on the last row, row 142, 27 single crochets. Then you'll do the second panel. Just remember, you're doing these decreases on the opposite side. Otherwise, the second panel is identical. Okay, now for the seaming, I wanted to show you how the panels are laying. So you've got the wrong sides up. This is the front, wrong side up. Now for the back, right sides are touching, the back and the front, right side, right side wrong side. So that when we seam, you've got the wrong side and the wrong side. And of course you're going to be matching up your rows at the top. Okay, so here is the top. This is the front panel, this is the back panel. These are the right sides. These are the wrong sides. Now you are going to leave four inches. Okay, so here is the center. 
And we're going to leave that curve unseamed. And then here at the point, that last row, you're going to leave four inches unseamed. Okay, so leave four inches open and then start seaming across the top of the shoulder down where it's shaping the round part of the shoulder and then down the side. And you'll be using your yarn needle, the length of yarn, and a whip stitch. Now I do suggest using the double strand so that you have a stronger seam, especially at the shoulder. Then you are going to seam along the side only up to about row 115. That's why I've got the markers st are still here. This is row 114.15. So that's where you're going to stop. Top of the shoulder, the rounded side, and then to about row 115. And then leave that open. Okay, so I seamed the top and then down to row 115-ish. Left 4 inches open. So you're leaving the curve open and then four inches at the very top. Leave that open. Now we're going to leave the side open for the armhole opening and we're going to pick up the seaming again. Okay, row 100 is where we started the decreasing when we were working from the bottom up and then we got to 100 and we started decreasing. Okay, so there's about 100. So now you want to pick up the seaming about four inches below that so that all of that remains open for the armhole. So then you start seaming from about row 190 down all the way to the bottom. Until you're back to row one. Okay. So here's the bottom. You're seaming to about row 90. This is about row 90. So I've got the yarn needle, the two strands. Well, it's one strand folded over. And then you're going to use a whip stitch. So that just means you're working around when you're seaming. So go over. And that's it. So just work your way all the way down to the bottom. After that we're going to do a little bitty border along the front center just to clean it up. And we'll do a little single crochet border around the armholes just to clean that up. And then we'll do a little collar. And now we're going to add the collar. And we're going to start with the front facing you. There's the little curve. And we are going to enter the hook in the corner at the very top of that last row. So there's the curve. And we will attach the yarn. And by the way, we are using a smaller hook. 
I'm using an F or a 3.75 millimeter and this will help stiffen up the collar so it stands up a little bit better and it's uh, got a little bit more support. Okay, so leave a tail. Attach it with a chain. And now, just for the first row, we're going to work in the back loops only of that chain that's formed at the top. So just for the first row. And we're going to do just regular single crochets and try to keep a tighter tension without causing any kind of buckle. And again, this is to give it more support, the collar. So just go all the way around, back loop only, until you get back to, so you're going to go around the back and back around to the other side right up there. There's that curve. So you'll stop here, chain one turn, and then we'll just keep building it up. Okay, after we complete five rows of the collar, we are going to start creating another curve. So we're going to chain one turn, and we're going to do a single crochet decrease over the first two spaces. And then continue your single crochets all the way around until you get to the other side. And then you'll do another decrease at the end. So we're only causing the little curve on the ends. Then you'll chain one turn, do another decrease, chain one turn, do another decrease. Okay, here is the completed collar, and it took 14 rows in total. And we did finish it with the decreases all the way to the last row on each side. Okay, I have added these little drawstrings so that we can close this at the top. And all I did was a chain of 36 and then I slip stitched into each chain and attached it on the inside close to the edge. Same thing on the other side. Now I want it on the inside so that when it's tied, these are not showing on the outside. They can stay hidden on the inside. That provides a nice clean look. And then we will also add a single crochet border from the top edge all the way to the bottom just to clean it up same thing on the other side of course and then we do the same with the underarm opening so just a simple single crochet edging and all of this I did on the right side with the right side facing you attach the yarn and just work your way around for a single crochet row. And that's it, folks. If you enjoy my work, I would really, again, appreciate your subscription. Clicking the like button below, the thumbs up. All of this is very helpful to me, and I appreciate you all so very much. Enjoy.